Yeah, hi everyone and uh, welcome to another video I've put together for you. Um, this one's going to be a slight change from normal, as in the fact in within these this video there's going to be a few short videos after and it's where I'm going to try and sort of show you the benefits of using two soldering irons during soldering rework. Um, this is a typical example of sort of something that can go wrong on your PCBs where the IC is like obviously the wrong polarity. You've got the polarity mark on the board up there, but you've got pin one on the device down this corner. Now I've seen a lot of people basically they sort of go from side to side, sort of blob both sides and they're sort of jumping across trying to get the component off but obviously the time you've sort of done that side, gone to that side, that side's reset so yeah I've seen people do it for a long time and you're sort of risking damage to the pads and stuff so you know hopefully I can sort of uh, sort of prove the worth of getting two soldering irons. There's a, there's a lot of ex, sort of examples I'm going to put together for you. Of um, where I, you know, it's, it's the way I do it, and it's, uh, I just find it really, really easy. It's probably the best sort of hint or tip I could really give to anyone when you're doing me work. So, yeah, all you do, blob up both sides. I do show this in one of my other videos as well. And all you've got to do then, lay your two irons on it, sort of, sort of lift it on its side, so sort of hold it there. And then, all you do then, just get your tweezers and just literally. Take that straight off, and that's how easy it is. You've got no sort of hassle of going from side to side. Obviously, I'll clean this. If it's a proper board, I'd sort of clean it up. It's just really a demo for you. So yeah, that's that's the benefits really. It's so easy, and uh, yeah, hopefully that sort of um, sort of proved the point in the first video. And you've got no sort of damage. Sort of basically, I would normally clean that up, but uh, like I say, it's just a demo. So what I do, I'll show you a few more examples and. Uh, yeah, hopefully I can prove the worth. Right, so now we come to another situation where two irons is a bit of a godsend. You've got six mis uh, sort of shifted components. There's three large ones, three resistors down near the side of them. And I've seen people, like I say, go end to end and uh, risk a lot of damage. This is just so easy. You really will think why you haven't sort of done this over the years. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you'll rush out to get a second iron once you've seen this. So first of all, just put a little bit of flux around the joints. This just makes sort of life so much easier, makes things flow so much better. And then you literally take your two irons and away you go. So all you do, one on each end, it's just really easy. Once the solder melts, it will just shift straight into place. It just saves going end to end like most people would over the years that I've seen. So literally just do that. Just get your irons, one on each end, make sure they're sort of melted. Just shift it straight into position. Obviously, normally I'd just tidy the joints and uh, and the board up after, but as it's just a bit of a demo, I'm sort of not that too fussed. You can see it's just so easy. You haven't got to do any wicking off of pads, and uh, yeah, it's you know it's great. So hopefully that persuades you to get your second iron. Right, so now we come to a couple of flipped resistors that um, I see people struggle over the years with these, but there's no need to. So you do a little bit of flux. And because you've got two irons, it's just way easier. Because I see people going from end to end and trying to get them off, and you've got to wick one in flat. It's just this is definitely the way to do it. Literally, just take it off, turn it straight over like that. Because otherwise, you've got to go end to end and uh, you risk losing the pads. And that, you know, that's like takes seconds. So, there you go, straight, straight over, easily done. Right, so now we come to quite a tricky scenario. I've got four LEDs here, and uh, basically, you can see the little green sort of pip on the end of the component up there. That should match the line on the board, which denotes the cathode. But on this particular one, LED9, I've got the green band up the other end. So what I do, I just light them up, just sort of to show you, uh, yeah, what's, what I mean. So that should, these three should light up. So I've got one, two, three. Let's do that one again. So them three uh, light up, but this one obviously don't because it's around the wrong polarity. So this is a this is a great one for two irons basically because you're going to protect the potted top of the component with the bond inside, which is quite delicate to heat. It's basically yeah, as always, a little bit of flux around the component. So this is this is quite a, you can't really do this with one iron. Really two is brilliant for this, and the hot air rework station is sort of out of the question for this as well. It's the top just won't take it. So yeah, all you do. Just turn it around like this. And just slide it into a new position. 
and that that is it basically I'll just, I'll just quickly go over the joints again just to tidy it up but what i'll do i light it up in a minute and uh yeah to show you it's around the right way but basically this is a it's a great one for two irons because like i say the tops just don't take the heat of a hot air rework station so yeah a little bit sort of fresh solder on there and uh that should now light up and that basically yeah there you go so that's around the right way no damage to the top and that's a great one for two irons so uh yeah hopefully that's proved another point right so this is another situation that i've often seen over the years tombstone resistors or could be tombstone capacitors or anything really so yeah you've got that one and that one they're on their side and that one sort of standing on its end normally you'd sort of have to wick one end off lay it down and resolder both ends but say with two irons it's just a lot easier so yeah same again bit of flux all round and um, yeah you can't get enough of this flux so just sort of put it on all the joints and literally take your two irons and away you go same again so we'll just lay it down push it the right way so the values up in the air and it, yeah it's just a great method and uh, and you will really this will change the way you solder so there you go it's another situation easily resolved right so this we have come to the final sort of surface mount part that i'm going to sort of take off just for this little demo i've got this rather large coil obviously the pads are quite a distance apart probably about sort of 15 millimeters and again i've seen people over the years go from end to end and it you know, this, these are difficult to get off of one iron so again sort of two does the does the job really easy and say this can be used this method for any large surface mount device with sort of two legs and uh, say this what you do to put your irons at the end it's literally is that easy and just basically slide it off the pads and uh, yeah like i say really well worth getting yourself a second iron and uh hopefully within these sort of short videos i've showed you a point so i've got no damage easily done but if you know if you use one iron you're risking things so hopefully within them sort of short videos i've sort of showed you something worthwhile and what i'll do after this i'll put a few sort of through hole videos up just showing you a few little devices you can get off the same dropping resistors out etc so yeah hopefully you enjoyed all this and uh, if you did please subscribe and and sort of give me a like and uh, i'll see you again soon thank you